Hello YouTube. I'm having a day. I just heard from my transplant team and I'm not happy. So I had a bronch last week and during the bronch they take a sputum sample to see if there's any infections or anything growing in my lungs. So we already found out a couple days ago that I have pseudomonas in my lungs, which is not shocking. I've had it at least once or twice post-transplant. Pseudomonas <laughs> is a little alarming because that's the thing that kind of almost killed me. Um, but I've also had it for decades at this point. And even though we cleared my lungs and got new lungs, I still have terrible sinuses. I still have pseudomonas in my sinuses, so there was always a risk of the infections from my sinuses coming down and infecting my lungs. So far, it's not been a big deal. You know, we've treated it with, I think, oral antibiotics and it cleared right up. So we saw pseudomonas, not a big deal. My doctor, um, you know, said anyway, I'm having sinus surgery um, in a month and having an IV antibiotics after that. So he said, you know, that should clear it right up. Fine. But today I got a call from the nurse and apparently um, my white blood cell count is moving up, which is an indicator of infection and means that my body is mounting an immune response against an infection, which is bad. We don't want my body to mount an immune response because we are trying to keep my immune system nice and quiet so it doesn't notice that I have somebody else's lungs in here. So white blood cell count going up, not good. They, were also, they also found at least one other infection. She mentioned staph, and I don't know if they found any other infections, but so we have multiple infections in my lungs. Um, and then you add on to that that I'm having some symptoms with increased mucus and they are not going to wait a month to take care of that. Which means at some point within the next couple days, I will be starting IV antibiotics. I have not been on IV antibiotics at this point in over a year, which is incredible because before transplant, I was on IV antibiotics three times a year and each time was for a month or more. So the fact that I haven't been on IV antibiotics at all in over a year is mind-boggling and amazing. Um, and I'm really grateful for that. At the same time, I don't want to go back on IV antibiotics. IV antibiotics are not fun. Um, and it also like reminds me of what it was like pre-transplant when I was super sick and going on IVs all the time. The other thing is that I no longer have a port. I used to have a port in my chest which is basically a permanent IV that they could, you know, access whenever I needed IVs. It made things a lot easier, but I don't have that anymore, which means they're gonna have to put in a pick line, which is a long-term IV that goes up here usually. The big advantages to the port that personally that I liked were one that it had to be changed once a week so when it was changed, I could grab a quick shower without any IVs sticking out of me during that like gap period. So that was super nice that once a week I could get an IV free shower. That's not possible with a pick line. As long as the pick line is in, I'm not going to be able to take a normal shower. I'm going to have to, you know, wrap it up and like be super careful about it. The other thing is that whenever I've had pick lines, I've had problems with tape. I guess because of the location and you know the, the bending of my arm and the movement, the tape pulls on my skin and my skin's a little sensitive to tape. So I very often end up with welts from the tape um, and I'm always itchy from the tape. Um, whereas when it was taped onto my chest, it was just much easier. I didn't have the same like itchiness. I never got welts. I didn't have those problems. So those are not exciting. I'm not excited about getting a pick line. I'm really not excited about the fact that the pick line is going to be in for at least a month, probably longer, because we're doing 10 days of antibiotics now. Then there's going to be, 
probably at least a week until I have surgery. And then we're going to be doing another couple weeks of antibiotics after the surgery. So it's gonna, I'm going to be picked up for quite a while and I'm not so happy about that. And the other super annoying thing is that my pseudomonas is really resistant to a lot of antibiotics. This was the problem with my lungs, that we weren't able to treat the pseudomonas anymore. It just wasn't responding to anything we threw at it. Um, so I have probably the exact same strain of pseudomonas in my sinuses, and that's what's infected my lungs now. So between the fact that my pseudomonas is really resistant and that there are multiple infections going on right now that they need to treat, they are limited in which antibiotics they're able to give me. And unfortunately, the only effective antibiotic they were able to find so far has to be given every six hours. So that is gonna be my life for the duration of time that I'm on antibiotics is just constant infusions and not much sleep. And I don't know how long the antibiotic runs for. So, you know, let's say it runs for an hour, hopefully less, but then, you know, I have to be awake, you know, to unhook it. You know, I have to be awake to hook it. I have to be awake to unhook it. And that whole process is happening every six hours, which means I'm getting less than six hours of sleep at a time. Um, and probably significantly less because it's not like as soon as I unhook the antibiotic, I just immediately fall asleep. So I'm going to be really tired for at least 10 days. And I also need to get a COVID test again because the pick line has to be put in at the interventional radiology department and nobody's being allowed to come in for procedures without being cleared of COVID. So I had a COVID test last week and I'm going to be having another one probably tomorrow. Um, and then I will be having another one before surgery and it's just a life of endless COVID tests. And the COVID test is really not fun. So all in all, I'm cranky today. Things are, you know, a little difficult right now, but I'm just trying to remember that however difficult they are, they're so much better than they were a year ago. Like, night and day, unbelievably better. So, you know, like if a year ago, if you would tell me this would be what I'm complaining about, I probably would have laughed because really, like you're going for a couple weeks of IVs once in a year, like get over yourself. So on the one hand, I need to, you know, cut myself slack and accept that like, yeah, it's okay and it's legit to be upset and to have a difficult time, but at the same time, recognize and comfort myself that it's way better than it used to be and that it could be a lot worse and that I've been through a lot worse. So if I could get through that, I can get through this. All right, I just got COVID test number three done. I had one each before my last two bronchoscopies and now I needed to get one so that I can go in and get my pick line tomorrow. So that's super fun. My eyes are still watering. Um, I really hate nasal swabs. They're really not fun. And I think the COVID one is like particularly deep and invasive. Um, so yeah not so exciting um particularly since i know that i'm having another one next month before my sinus surgery and another one in august so i can get my pulmonary function tests before my next appointment so apparently i'm on the frequent flyer covid test plan it's 7 a.m and i'm not happy about it we are on our way into philly to go get my pick line placed and unfortunately first thing in the morning was the only option so that's happening um, yeah and then this afternoon the nurse will come out and show me how to use my fancy new pump thing and then we will get this show on the road you may notice something different um, I decided that I needed a pick-me-up 
so since I really I need a haircut but that's not an option um, I'm not doing any public stuff like that where I might get exposed so instead we took the next best option which was to re-dye it since it was all faded so I've switched over from blue to purple I think it's looking pretty fab so that does help a little bit to at least like have fun hair and feel like I'm looking good so because of course that was the priority you know the night before having to get up early and get a procedure was to make sure I have fabulous hair so that didn't go exactly as planned um, I have a pick line it's in it went in pretty easily um, but I got dizzy from the lidocaine that they put in to like numb me up before putting in the pick so that was weird that's never happened to me before um, and then when we got home as soon as we pulled into the parking lot all of a sudden i noticed huh there's something wet on my arm and then i looked and there was blood everywhere they for some reason did not put a, a pressure dressing on the pick which when i was in the hospital every time they gave me a pick line they would first like put like a big hunk of gauze on top of it and then put a really tight dressing on it to put pressure on it so that it wouldn't like bleed all over the place for some reason they didn't do that and apparently that was a mistake because i bled all over the place so that caused a little bit of panic and a few panic stricken phone calls to figure out what to do apparently the answer is nothing because the nurse is coming out this afternoon and apparently it's fine for me to just be bloody for a few hours until the nurse can come out and change it. Um, on the plus side, it didn't bleed for long. Like there was an alarming amount of blood, but it stopped pretty quickly. So since it's not continuing to bleed, I guess it's fine until somebody can come out and clean me up and fix it. So that was an exciting start to this uh, IV antibiotic adventure. Let's hope it goes better from here on out. All right, nurse came out and I'm now set up with my new constant companion of the next 10 days. My antibiotic is in here. It's actually infusing right now as we speak. Inside, we've got the bag of antibiotic. We've got the pump all set up in here. And there's a little pocket on the front with a window so I can access the pump and see what I need if I need to do anything. Um, this will be attached 24 hours a day I only have to change the bag once a day, so that'll be at around, you know, 2.30 every day because that's when I did it today. And then the pump takes care of the rest, and every six hours, it'll run the antibiotic. The advantage of this is that I don't have to, like, wake up and run it myself every six hours because it'll just run, which means I will actually be able to get sleep while this is happening. The downside is that it doesn't come off when it's between infusions. It just runs a little bit of stuff through the line very slowly to prevent the line from closing up. But that means I can't take it off. So that part's a little annoying. They gave me a choice if I wanted to get these little like self-infusing balls that you know I would hook up four times a day or if I wanted the pump. I chose the pump because I know when I've done six every six hours in the past and had to infuse it myself that I about lost my mind from sleep deprivation. So I figured I would try the pump this time because I haven't done that before and get sleep. But I may have made a mistake. It feels like carrying this around all day, every day is gonna get old pretty quickly. So we'll see how that goes. So that is it. I am all set up for my 10 days of IV antibiotics and hopefully everything will be smooth sailing from here on out. All right, see you next time.